Here we see the representation of a single photon of light. Scientists understand many of the properties of light, but light still holds some mysteries that perplex us. Thomas Young first demonstrated the wave nature of light in 1803 with his famed double slit experiment, and ever since then the world's top minds have debated what the results of this experiment actually mean. Although Young's double slit experiment is repeated many times every day, we are always left with the same perplexing question that goes to the core of quantum mechanics and even our very understanding of matter. Is light a particle or a wave? Experiments have revealed that light has the properties of both a particle and a wave, but how can it be both a particle and a wave? Then we find this to be the case for all electromagnetic radiation and all matter. This leaves the world's brightest minds still searching for answers to this basic question. Is matter a particle or a wave? In this video series you will be shown the solution to our dilemma. In fact you are looking at that solution right now. The fields shown around the green photon are electromagnetic fields of opposite polarity with the red field being of north magnetic orientation and the blue field being of south magnetic orientation. It will be proven that this is actually the way that magnetic fields are structured around all matter. This applies from the smallest particles we have discovered to the largest structures in space. If you were to measure these fields with a compass, their magnetic fields would appear identical to the magnetic fields of a bar magnet. This also means that when we measured the magnetic fields of matter with other methods in the lab, we also assumed that matter had a bar magnet type of magnetic field. But this assumption was a mistake. So until now we have incorrectly assumed that electrons and other matter have a magnetic field shape as shown in this drawing. But we must realize that the fields around an electron as well as around all other matter are actually two opposing bowl-shaped electromagnetic fields. Unless we properly understand this basic magnetic field structure, we will never be able to properly understand the fundamental forces of matter from the subatomic to the galactic. In this presentation you will be shown that correcting this one basic misunderstanding of magnetic fields also explains most all of our problems in physics and astrophysics. I believe that this magnetic field structure is an intrinsic property of all matter. Therefore, you cannot have a particle of matter unless these magnetic fields are there to form it and confine it. To further understand these magnetic fields and validate this new theory, hundreds of experiments were conducted utilizing a vacuum chamber and specially constructed bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters. When 70,000 volts of electricity is applied, the plasma formations that you are now seeing appear. A variety of purging gases were used in these experiments. This includes ordinary air, argon, hydrogen, and helium. The spacing and orientation of the magnetic field emitters were varied in many ways as well.
The magnetic field emitters were suspended on non-conductive high-strength microfilament line attached to magnetic supports on the inner surface of the vacuum chamber. Then to hold these supports in place, high-strength magnets were utilized on the outer surface of the vacuum chamber. This arrangement allows for the adjustment of the magnetic field emitters while the experiment is running. The small microfilament support lines also offer minimum disturbance of the plasma flow around the fields and therefore a more realistic experimental result. A variety of bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters were utilized in these experiments in order to reveal how changing the geometry of the field emitters affects the matter around them. As you can clearly see here, a change of magnetic field emitter geometry also results in a change in the shape of the plasma formation within the vacuum chamber. By adjusting the exposure settings on the camera, an X-shaped pattern is revealed between the magnetic field emitters that is amazingly similar to the shape of the red square nebula. You can even see the bowl shape of the magnetic fields in the red square nebula. Notice how increasing the spacing between the magnetic field emitters transforms the shape of the nucleus until finally a disk of plasma forms around the nucleus. Also notice the rapid spin of the plasma around the magnetic field emitters even though the field emitters are stationary. Here you can clearly see how even a single magnetic field emitter controls the shape of the plasma around it. Notice how it confines the plasma to the lower part of the vacuum chamber. In preparing for this research, I pondered what other geometries of bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters would be beneficial for this research. I carefully studied the structures in space for guidance in the design of a new bowl-shaped field emitter. From the structures in space to the structures of matter revealed in the collisions at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, all sources of data were considered. I carefully studied the amazing research underway at the Large Hadron Collider and I found a wealth of evidence for this new theory in the collisions there. This evidence will be discussed at length in Primer Fields Part 4. In reviewing a video from CERN I noticed something quite bizarre and it wasn't in the data from the collisions. It was in the shape of CERN's most well-recognized building the globe of science and innovation in Geneva, Switzerland. Not only was it a bowl shape, but the design of the building also had a hole in the top of the dome exactly as my theory would call for. So I made a magnetic scale model of the CERN dome, placed a set of them in my vacuum chamber, and fired it up. Not only did these CERN bowls form a spherical shape at the center of the reaction, 
but they also formed a disk of plasma around the nucleus, as well as ejection jets along the axis. After running the experiments for a few days with the CERN bowls, they were removed from the vacuum chamber and photographed, revealing the patterns you see here. These amazing patterns will also be discussed further in part four of this series of videos. Then once it was realized that the key pattern required for this theory was found in the dome at CERN, it was also discovered that CERN was not the only place with the required pattern. The pattern has been there for centuries at the Pantheon in Rome, which has been referred to as the Vault of the Heavens. Then the required shape was also found at St. Peter's Basilica. Then one of my favorites was found at St. Paul's Cathedral in Medina, Malta. Notice the angels circling the hole at the top of the dome and compare that to the glowing ring that is found inside the bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters in the vacuum chamber. Why are these angels on fire exactly where they should be? Much more on this dome and the others later in this series of videos. So it seems that people often want a sign from God that we are not alone. Sometimes God does give us a sign if we just pay attention. Sometimes he even puts that sign up over the capital of the United States of America. Then we will take a look at Newgrange in Ireland. This structure predates Stonehenge by over 200 years, and yet it too contains unbelievable details related to this new theory of the structure of all matter. More on Newgrange later in this video series. Here we have the assortment of the magnetic field emitters that were utilized in my research and in this video series. These emitters all have the same basic properties but they do vary in size, geometry, and magnetic field strength. The design and construction of these field emitters are covered by patents that have been filed in both the United States of America and internationally. No rights to the use of the technology covered by these patents is granted or implied, as clearly stated in the statement at the beginning of this video. Notice how these ordinary non-magnetized steel balls are held in place at the center or nucleus of these field emitters. Then we will take a look at the data from the sun. You will be shown how the results from the vacuum chamber experiments match the data and features of the sun. This includes super rotation about the equator and the patterns of the surface flows on the sun. We will also see the amazing confirmation of this new theory in the data from probes such as the Ulysses mission, which mapped many of the characteristics of the sun. You will even be given an entirely new theory as to the true cause of the solar cycle and an explanation of the so-called coronal heating problem. This will all be covered in detail in part five of this video series. You will clearly see how this new theory explains the structure of not only the sun, but also all matter, from electrons, to atoms, to molecules, to planets, to stars, to nebula, and even to entire galaxies.
you will see amazing proof of these bowl-shaped magnetic fields at work on and around Saturn in part two of this video series. We will look at how relativistic jets are truly formed and experiments that were conducted in the lab to confirm this new jet formation theory. This will be covered in great detail in part two of this video series. Part six of this video series includes over an hour of video and images of the high voltage plasma experiments that were conducted in the vacuum chamber. After completing hundreds of these vacuum chamber experiments, I am positive that the answers to both the energy crisis and global warming are now within our reach. Utilizing this new knowledge of the true forces that hold all matter together, a radically new type of energy reactor is in the works. These energy reactors will be very small, safe, and relatively inexpensive. So the dream of low-cost electricity is at the door. As you can see here, we are already well on our way to fulfilling our dream. Plus, there is an additional benefit to this technology, zero carbon emissions. We still have some work to do, but it really shouldn't take that long, now that we finally have the true understanding of the forces that bind all matter. Testing on this new reactor should begin by the summer of 2013. But there is other technology based on this new theory that has already been in the testing phase for over six years. Results so far have been amazing, and this product will be announced in the first quarter of 2013. But that's for later. For now, let's get back to how these fields work to confine matter. Here we see how the plasma spins and flows. In upcoming sections of this video series, we will examine this flow in more detail and its relationship to the spokes in the rings of Saturn and the solar wind. Then we will take a look at how these bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters cause both magnetized and non-magnetized balls to form the amazing arrays shown here. The only thing holding these balls in position are the magnetic fields emanating from these two bowls. Could this truly be the way that atomic and molecular structures are properly explained? I believe so. Let's take a look at the forces that work in the nucleus area of these bowl-shaped magnetic fields. Shown here are ordinary, non-magnetized, 5mm steel balls. These bowl-shaped magnetic fields induce a magnetic field into each steel ball, which causes them to repel each other, while at the same time keeping the balls structured together. So this mysterious force not only causes the steel balls to become packed tightly together, but it also keeps them apart. Then it does this while at the same time forming a geometrically balanced pattern, just as we find within atoms and molecules. Notice the vibration in all of the steel balls as each new ball is added to the nucleus area. What we see at work here is what I believe would truly be defined as the strong force. Then we will take a look at some incredible cutting edge research from scientists at IBM. This is an atomic force microscope image of the actual structure within a nanographene molecule. Now we see the image of the nanographing molecule superimposed on top of the array of steel balls that were formed in the nucleus area of the bowl-shaped magnetic fields.
The steel balls are supported by a sheet of clear acrylic which does not come in contact with the magnetic bowls at all. Therefore, it is only the magnetic fields of the red and blue bowls which are responsible for the shape of the patterns we observe here. Here we see 3 mm steel balls in the nucleus area of the magnetic fields. Notice how they can trade positions with the other balls in the array, but the basic geometric pattern is always maintained. Now let's take a look at how these non-magnetized steel balls form orbital patterns around these bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters. Again, notice how even in the orbital area, these magnetic fields cause the steel balls to be packed tightly together, and yet at the same time they repel each other. Even 25 mm non-magnetized steel balls follow these same rules. I believe it is time to reevaluate our theories of atomic structure and the forces that work therein. As you can see, a wide range of steel balls were placed around these magnetic fields with the same basic results. Here we see 5 mm non-magnetized steel balls forming a complex array of orbitals around the nucleus. Notice how the steel balls all repel each other. The red and blue bowls are identical in construction and magnetic strength. The only difference is the magnetic polarity of the bowls. The red bowls are north magnetic polarity and the blue bowls are south magnetic polarity. Notice the various ways in which these bowls will bond with each other. Here we see how the large and small bowls interact with each other magnetically. Notice how the small blue bowl is forced to flip over and then floats within the large red bowl. The small red bowl responds quite differently as you can clearly see. Then we find the same rules in effect within the large blue bowl. Now you see how the orbital distance of the small bowl set is determined by the spacing between the large red and blue bowls. This same principle applies to magnetic balls placed within the orbital equator area perpendicular to the large bowls. In this demonstration, a singular magnetic ball is held in place by the magnetic bowls, and then a second magnetic ball is added. Then it was discovered that this orbital effect is there even when the polarity of the magnetic field emitters is reversed.
Pouring two millimeter steel balls into the large bowls reveal the true forces at work in the Southern Crab Nebula. A wide variety of methods were used to study the magnetic fields emanating from these bowls. Here we see ferrofluid at work showing the magnetic patterns formed within these bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters. Then for the very first time, it's now possible to actually repel non-magnetized steel balls with a static magnetic field. The magnetic field emitted from these bowls induces a magnetic field into the steel ball and then repels it along the axis of these magnetic field emitters. This knowledge is the key to understanding how these magnetic fields can find the nucleus of all matter from electrons to galaxies. In this experiment, the anode, or the positive side of the high voltage electrical supply, has been disconnected from the lower part of the vacuum chamber. As you can see here, the ejection jets are formed by the magnetic field emitters even if one of the positively charged anodes is removed from within the vacuum chamber. So you should be starting to understand that a critical mistake was made by scientists when it was assumed that the magnetic fields emanating from matter such as atoms was due to a simple bar-shaped magnetic field within the atom. This assumption led to many ill-formed ideas as to the true forces at work from the subatomic level to the galactic level. Correct this one basic misunderstanding and then many difficult problems in science become very clear and easy to understand. Here we see iron filings revealing the magnetic field lines around a bar magnet. Now we see a compass being used to reveal the magnetic field around the bowl shaped emitter set. Notice that the field emitted from both the bowls and the bar magnet are the same. No wonder mankind was unaware of these bowl shaped magnetic fields. They were hiding right in front of us the whole time. In this image, the magnetic field lines around the typical structure of an atom, a star, or even a galaxy are shown in magenta. But we need to remember that even though the magnetic field lines measured around matter are of this shape, it is not due to a bar-shaped magnet along the axis of the matter being measured. There are in reality dual bowl-shaped magnetic fields around the nucleus that cause this measured shape of magnetic field lines.
So here is the basic shape of the magnetic fields that emanate from a typical structure in space. Now let's examine some structures in space and see if we can't find evidence for this shape at work in galactic formations. Here is how we were mistaken in our understanding of the true forces at work in galactic structures. These large structures in space could not be explained by the currently accepted theory of gravity alone. So as we studied these structures, it was assumed that some extra source of gravity was required to explain how all this matter could be held in orbit around the central star in these galaxies. This is how the theory of black holes became accepted when trying to explain these structures. It was a totally reasonable line of thinking, but it was found that even using black holes with incredible gravity, we could still not explain how these large structures in space are held together and function. So the next mistake that we made was to assume that some other extra matter was there to explain these large structures in space. Along came our theory of dark matter. But even when we applied both the theory of black holes and dark matter to our puzzle, there still were some problems. It seems the universe itself was not only expanding, but that that rate of expansion was increasing. To explain this, we came up with the theory of dark energy. So now we have invented three totally unproven theories to explain what we find in the visible and known matter in space. Black holes, dark matter, and dark energy. but they are not required at all if you eliminate the basic misunderstanding of magnetic fields around the nucleus of all structures in space. Once you properly understand this revolutionary theory of how magnetic fields can cause not only plasma, but actual matter to form the structures we find in space, you will clearly see that black holes, dark matter, and dark energy do not exist at all. We made some fatal mistakes in our thinking. Utilizing this new theory, you will find that even bizarre structures like Gomez's hamburger are now very easy to understand. As we explore this new theory, we will be examining images and data gathered by scientists, researchers, and astronauts. Their incredible efforts have made it possible for all of us to finally begin to truly understand the forces at work in our universe. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We will be using images from telescopes in space, as well as images captured by a wide variety of telescopes here on Earth.
Although I totally believe in plasma formations, there are clearly times where there is much more than just electricity and plasma required to explain what we see in space. This is the case in radio galaxy Hercules A. There is clearly actual matter being ejected along the axis of this galaxy from the evidence we see here. I have undertaken hundreds of plasma experiments, and I am convinced that external electricity alone cannot explain the formation we find in Hercules A. So let's take a look at how matter can be ejected by these bowl-shaped magnetic fields. So now I'm going to show you magnetic ejection utilizing the CERN ball. So this one will shoot these magnets, ordinary magnets, about 25 to 30 feet across the room if I have a large room. I don't have that big a room we're working in right now. So I'm just going to show you what it'll do. So pulls it down here. And I'll just put it in through the bottom, through the hole in the bottom. A little tricky, it doesn't really want to go in there. <laughs> it's kind of against it. But then you can get it to where it's a balance point, where it doesn't take any energy. But once you push it past that balance point, Knowing that all matter has a magnetic component to it, you can now see how these incredibly strong, bowl-shaped magnetic fields in space could accelerate matter to nearly the speed of light without requiring external electricity, black holes, dark matter, or even dark energy. Now let's take a look at some more formations in space and the magnetic fields around them. By now you can clearly see that the structures we find in space are easily explained by these bowl-shaped magnetic fields without using black holes, dark matter, or dark energy. It is important to note that these bowl-shaped magnetic fields will not always be nice simple symmetrical structures. They can be warped, twisted, offset, or one field might even be larger than the other as shown here. But once you understand the basics of this new theory of matter formation due to bowl-shaped magnetic fields, you will be able to easily explain most all of the structures we find in space.
So to review, we have seen how these simple bowl-shaped fields operate in the vacuum chamber and the way in which they shape plasma. We have seen how glowing rings are formed within the bowl-shaped magnetic fields. We have also witnessed how the ejection jets are formed from these magnetic fields. We have seen how the shape of the reaction changes as we adjust the distance between the bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters. Then we have seen how a disk of plasma will form around the equator of the magnetic fields. We have also seen how these formations of plasma rotate at high speeds even though the field emitters are stationary. We have seen how these bowl-shaped magnetic fields will cause both magnetized and non-magnetized balls to form orbital rings around the nucleus of the fields. Then in the nucleus area, we found that non-magnetized steel balls form geometrically shaped arrays that match the patterns found at the molecular level. We saw how non-magnetized steel balls formed amazing arrays around these bowl-shaped magnetic fields. It was seen how a magnetic ball was held in line with the equator of these bowl-shaped fields. We witness how the orbital distance is controlled by the spacing between these magnetic field emitters.
We saw how pouring two millimeter steel balls into one of these magnetic bowls revealed the true forces at work in the Southern Crab Nebula. It was shown how these bowl-shaped magnetic fields will repel non-magnetized steel balls away from the bottom of the bowl in line with the axis. We saw how these magnetic bowls will also eject matter at high velocities. Then finally, we saw how these bowl-shaped magnetic fields can explain most all of the structures we find in space without requiring black holes, dark matter, or dark energy. In part two of this video series, you will see more on how these bowl-shaped electromagnetic fields truly explain the structure of all matter, from the subatomic to the galactic. Thank you.